tea, it's up to you, it's up to me. Cold drinks come in four cups, gotta know the size before you fill it up. Biggie, medium, small, kids meal, keep it straight, it's a good deal. Use the scoop to fill with ice, never use the cup, take my advice. You know, nothing beats a great cheeseburger. Dave Thomas was an orphan. Eating hamburgers in restaurants was the only thing that gave him a sense of belonging and purpose. When he was eight years old, he set out a plan to open the best restaurant in the world and later founded Wendy's. But first, he had to take on a risk that would make or break his career, turn KFC's failing stores into a successful franchise. In 1932, Dave Thomas was born in New Jersey. His parents weren't married and put him up for adoption when he was six weeks old. Several months later, he was taken in by a couple from Michigan who kept his adoption a secret. Still, Thomas never got the chance to know what it was like to grow up with a real family. When he was five years old, his mother passed away from rheumatic fever. From then on, Dave's father struggled to find work. He bounced from job to job and state to state and could only afford to settle in dirty boarding houses or cramped trailers. He was a hard worker and honest, but as far as being a father, he didn't have the time or the inclination. Fortunately, Dave's grandmother made time for him and sometimes brought him to work. She was a cook and a dishwasher at a white tablecloth restaurant that served family-style meals. From inside the kitchen, Dave would watch the hustle and bustle between the staff and the customers eat and laugh with excitement. It became a pastime, especially when he ate dinner with his father in silence. He rarely cooked and brought Dave to greasy diners for his favorite meal, a mouth-watering hamburger. It was a substitution for other things. There's something about eating, about the family tradition of eating together. When people eat, they're happy. While Dave had a rough start to his childhood, he discovered a passion that led to the inspiration behind Wendy's. When Dave was 10 years old, his father remarried and moved to Indiana. Dave no longer felt welcomed at home, so he set out to find work from anyone who would hire him. He ended up working several odd jobs that he hated and didn't keep for very long, including a gas station attendant, paper boy, golf caddy, and pin setter. One day, he got fired from a new job at Walgreens after they discovered he was underage. When his father found out, he slammed his fists on the kitchen table. You'll never keep a job. I'll be supporting you for the rest of your life, he shouted. At that moment, Dave vowed never to lose another job again. Fortunately, he quickly found a new one at a restaurant called The Regus. During the school year, he worked every weekend, and during the summer, he worked every day for 12 hours. But Dave didn't mind. He was happy to be working in a restaurant and looked up to the owners, Frank and George Regus, as his mentors. As long as you try, you can do anything you want to do, be anything you want to be they would tell Dave. The Regis brothers not only motivated him, but made him feel like he belonged. But not long after, Dave discovered shocking news that made him feel more alone than ever. When Dave turned 13, his grandmother revealed the truth about his identity. He was adopted. It really hurt that nobody told me before. It is a terrible feeling to know my natural mother didn't want me. From then on, Dave became more determined to make it on his own and developed a work ethic that helped build Wendy's. When Dave was 15 years old, his father moved the family to Fort Wayne. Right away, he found a new job as a busboy at a restaurant called The Hobby House. There, he met his third mentor, Phil Klaus. Even in a suit, Phil would sweep the floors and put away the dishes. He was not only a hard worker, but kind and humble. If I can do it, anyone can do it, he would say. Just when Dave was starting to feel at home, his father announced that they were moving again. This time, Dave didn't join them. Instead, he rented a room near the hobby house. Someday you'll be proud of me. 
I'm going to have my own restaurant and I'm going to be a success, Dave told his father as he prepared to leave. I hope you're right, son. Good luck to you, his father responded. At 15 years old, Dave was on his own and working a minimum of 50 hours a week. In one of his school essays on the pursuit of happiness, he wrote, Before I ever go into business myself, I am going to know my business. I'm going to start on the small scale and build my experience. He also wrote how he would achieve his goal. After I finish school, I want to join the army for a while and be a cook. In this way, I will get more experience. I will be all set to start the pursuit of happiness with a restaurant of my own. Not long after, he dropped out of high school and enlisted in the army a few years later. Starting from the bottom prepared Dave for a risky endeavor that paved the way for Wendy's success. When Dave was dispatched from the army, he returned to the hobby house and worked as a cook. Over the years, he worked his way up to being the manager to vice president. One day, Phil told him about a man he met at a restaurant convention who could bring in more business. His name is Harlan Sanders, and he says he invented a new recipe and a new way of frying chicken, Phil said with excitement. Dave raised his eyebrows. Why should we pay some guy who looks like a billy goat for his recipe when we already have good chicken, Dave argued. For once, Phil didn't listen to Dave and signed a deal to sell Harlan's Kentucky Fried Chicken. For each piece they sold, they would give him five cents. Afterwards, Harlan came into the restaurant and introduced himself to Dave. When he left, I had a sense this man was going to change my life, Dave recalled. Within a few months, the Hobby House became one of the first and biggest takeout restaurants in the US. People were hooked on Harlan's fried chicken and would wait in lines outside the door. Eventually, Phil opened four Kentucky Fried Chicken franchises in Columbus. But his partners didn't have any restaurant experience and hired the wrong people. After just a year, each store struggled to stay afloat and Phil was over $2 million in debt. It was then that Phil decided to ask Dave to take on a risky endeavor, turn the stores around for a 40% stake in each one. Everyone, including Harlan, told him he was making a big mistake. Listen to the colonel, boy. As your friend, get out now while you can. Things are just too far gone here, Harlan warned. By then, Dave was married with four children. It was his only chance to make more money to support his family. Within six years, he surprised everyone but Phil. He managed to turn the stores around by simplifying the menu, coming up with its iconic sign, and changing the frying method. One year later, he sold his shares of the KFC franchises for more than $1.5 million. Turning a failing business into a successful franchise taught Dave how to save Wendy's in the future. After Dave sold his shares and became a millionaire, he feared that he would one day struggle again. So when the opportunity came to lead operations for another franchise, he didn't hesitate to say yes. But his dream of owning a restaurant was still on his mind. So much that he would talk about how he would make the perfect hamburger to his friend, Len Imke, for hours. Eventually, Len grew tired of hearing Dave talk about his plans instead of acting on them. One day, he drove him to downtown Columbus in hopes of grabbing a hamburger for lunch. It's closed. Dave said in disappointment. See, Dave, this is what I've been telling you. It's tough to get a meal down here at noon. We really need a hamburger operation, Len pleaded. Afterwards, Len told Dave he had the perfect location for him, a building that he owned at 257 East Broad Street. Immediately, they shook hands on a deal, and Dave started to think of a restaurant name. He settled on Wendy's, named after his red-headed, freckle-faced eight-year-old daughter. On November 15, 1969, Wendy's was open for business and specialized in its iconic square patties and frosty dessert. Customers were hooked, and within six weeks, the restaurant was already making a profit. 
Not one to sit back, Dave continued to think of ways to improve the business and introduced the world's first pickup window. He also launched the salad bar, the hot stuff baked potato, and a super value menu. When he decided to franchise, people told him there was no room for another hamburger chain. But he quickly proved them wrong. Wendy's went public three years later. It also became the first in its industry to surpass $1 billion in annual sales within its first 10 years and opened stores faster than its competitors. Today, it's the third largest hamburger chain in the US and has more than 6,500 stores in 30 countries. In Dave's memoir, he shared key advice for aspiring entrepreneurs. Your fears and self-doubts are your personal traps. You may say, I've never done it before. How do I know I can do it? There are never any guarantees, but there are also no rewards without risk. Talk positively to yourself because your own negative thoughts will hold you back more than another person will. This is the story of how an unwanted child beat the odds and turned his passion for hamburgers into a billion dollar chain. For more inspiring stories and advice from today's most successful leaders, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.